Aggressive, very good at starting fights. Syndra is another one. So because we have all these target bands, we have so many of the S tier picks now available for a team like the Rocks Tigers. Obviously, we have seen Vladimir a lot being played against Syndra, which is an obvious choice in that sense. But there are definitely more picks you can go for. Like, I want to see things like Echo mid or Fizz mid against Syndra, because I actually think you can snowball against it, but it's risky, very risky. Yeah, I, I think coming into this tournament, Syndra is probably the best mid laner available right now, and obviously Rocks putting a lot of emphasis on her, rotating her first rotation. We just saw in the previous game that Syndra was not actually prioritized as heavily as a lot of people probably expected her to be. So we're going to see what Rocks can do with her, because also normally Kuro uh, is not known as a powerhouse mid like Syndra would suggest. Yeah, not as much pressure maybe that he can apply. Alstar picked up there. Anex quickly rotates it. Lucian Vlad has to quickly catch up on the draw. Prey back onto Caitlyn with Ezreal open. Is interesting into the Lucian, maybe looking to win the matchup a bit more. And Peanut, Nidalee, at least he's very sta he's staple junglers. Nidalee taken away, so probably taking Elise here. Yeah, you, we got to look at the entire combo here for from the Rocks Tigers. While Koro is not the guy who will solo kill you in lane, if he has a winning matchup in terms of pushing, he's actually very good at roaming, obviously. We've seen that quite a lot in the LCK. So if you look at what they have in the bottom lane, well, it's a combo we've seen quite a bit. Alistar into traps from Caitlyn, and then you have follow-up from a Syndra roaming, a Lee Sin ganking. That's a ton of CC to catch someone like the Lucian. Yep, and the other thing that I want to point out about the Roxas draft is they're giving Smeb the counter pick in top lane. They're letting him do whatever he wants uh, when Annex shows us what they're gonna pick against him. And what I really like about this Rox Tigers draft is they are all out. Every single lane is a powerhouse, and Lee Sin jungle, so much dominance. Let's see what picks up here for ANX because Poppy is picked in there and Likrit is considering his last pick. Lee Sin was the pick up for Peanut as well, not Elise. So still a very aggressive jungle with Nidalee taken off the board. Likrit is shown us so many unique supports. Does he go to Tarek here? Looks like he is. It is, a, it is a pick he's been saving, obviously, because Tarek is not the strongest support in the current meta. Especially the laning phase is a problem. Now you can play it against some of these hard engaged melee supports, but it's not easy to dominate early on and we are in a meta where strong lanes are heavily favored being able to put pressure early on is good that's why Tarek has fallen out yep. win games we've seen both things happen obviously lost that game to CLG where CLG were so far ahead and were able to close out the game no other team were able to do it against the Rocks Tigers yep and moving in where it looks like we're just gonna have a five-point start so all the laners are just gonna move out to every single lane and make sure that no shenanigans are happening uh, definitely no one wants to give up first blood or any sort of disadvantage early on. Yeah, level ones have a kind of... Like, for some games, they're, they're kind of boring, but other games when CLG plays, they're actually super exciting because there's a lot of, like, mind <laughs> games you can do. But a lot of teams, as you said, just fan out as five. They kind of look at each other. They're like, we don't really want to invade because we don't need to spot, like, a lane swap, you know? And we don't want to just all in on top side because then we need to have a very specific strategy in mind. And we show, basically, from the get-go, you are invading. So it's very standard. Fan out, nothing really happens. And then like bot lane is where you see the most action in terms of do we get a camp, do we deny a camp. Often with melee supports though, you tend to want to not invade and actually stop the camp specifically because it can be risky versus the CC. But instead go down to your lane very early. But when it's double melee, you know what, you can actually do both. Yeah, and no one getting in right now, so no vision into that jungle. I mean, the start should be relatively predictable, it feels like, for these two teams, but everyone's going to be a little dark moving out as the minions will exit the Nexus. Kuro versus Kuro, of course. We've seen a lot of this matchup. We expect Kuro to have some initiative in the matchup. We'll see if he can get it done here. But Kuro playing up early on. Kuro going to trade back nicely with the Thunderlord's frog. Yeah, and right now it looks like we're going to have relatively standard openings from both teams. So what Peanut is maybe looking to do is, depending on how Smurf plays the top lane and how Smeb can... Uh, push the lane or not push the lane. Uh, we can probably expect to see some sort of aggression out of Peanut early on, but hold that thought as Steos is moving into Peanut's red side jungle. Oh, this is something you can do if the enemy jungler is fairly slow at getting to the red buff. He will actually find him. Peanut has no smite because he had to use it on the crook, so very standard pathing for Peanut. It is Steos who's kind of mixing it up, and this is actually something I remember watching in the LCK where some of these Korean junglers were fooling around with the enemy. I actually remember Peanut doing it himself. So he's, uh, he's taking <laughs> Peanut's own play and using it against him. Sadly, he doesn't get the red buff. He just slows down the Lee Sin. Well, I like it. Nonetheless, there is Kira actually going aggressive at level two, straight in onto Kuro as the slow will land him from the W. He will regenerate relatively good amounts of health between the Q and the Doran shield that he started with, but Kira already playing up and Peanut getting forced out of his jungle is very unusual. 
Yeah. For the Rock's Tigers. Peanut right now, he's going to be on top of that ward. So Anax is completely aware of where Peanut will be for about the next minute or so, as his path is going to be relatively predictable. So nothing really going to happen in top or mid lane. Um, and so we're just going to be farming for both sides right now. Yeah, if you are obviously playing yourself in solo queue and everything, always just look for this jungle information. Now, uh, Kira, just take some damage. He's going to be fine. But if you get a ward, you know, in the enemy jungle on a camp and you spot the enemy jungle, very often you kind of picture where he's going in your head and you can figure out in one minute he's probably on bottom side. Same thing is going to happen here. Koro's probably just going to go up and grab a blue buff unless they want to start invading and try and punish Seos for having that aggressive invade that didn't work because now he's actually on his own red buff and Peanut is coming. You're not going to look for this here. Not going to be able to steal the buff, but can he get a kill? Perhaps Peanut walks over the trap. Ward hops in, looks for the Q, does not land it. But every lane pushing for Rox and Peanut invading. This is Rox Tigers 101. I really like the small mind games between the junglers. You know, one guy invades first, then the second one invades if Peanut against Steos. Steos had put a trap in the bush. So he actually saw Peanut show up. He didn't have to suddenly flash away if he saw random Q flying out of the bush. It's a good little uh, placement on the trap, making sure that he doesn't have to blow a flash. Yeah, and Peanut's going to uh, continue to basically farm out his jungle. And for the most part, this is going to enable Rox's top and mid lane to just go a little bit more aggressive. However, Kuro is going to get the blue buff. And so even though he expended a lot of his mana early on trying to pressure Kira out of the lane, uh, now he's going to come back in and all his mana is going to go back up and he's going to try to shove him back. Yeah, exactly. And the thing about this matchup, we actually talked about this off-air LS, how Vladimir, he doesn't win this lane. Yes, he's considered like one of the counter picks to Cinder by a lot of pro players, but he doesn't destroy the lane. He often gets pushed into his tower, but he tries to just even farm. Problems for Vladimir is when Cinder gets blue buff and when she gets her lost chapter. So she has enough mana to just keep playing acro. Aggression here though. Oh, Q is going to miss, but who's going to get it? Peanut smites it away. Going to spot the wall, but Steos actually goes in aggressive. Huge damage from the Nidalee and starting to bully around a bit. This is what Peanut's Nidalee is known for, but take that pick away and Peanut's feeling the pressure. Smurf feeling the same, no one top is. Here we go, mid. All of a sudden the action. Q's going to hit. Steos did it. That's first blood for ANX. And that is so big for ANX right now. Blue buff, reset on Steos. He's going to be able to sustain so long right now, and that is not what Rox Tigers wanted to have happen because now Peanut is going to be pretty far behind. He can't do anything in mid. Smeb is going to be recalling soon, and bot lane is going to be looking for recalls as well. So what is Peanut to do? Right now, all he can do is basically farm to level 6 and then maybe try a gank in one of the side lanes where you have very strong lanes. We've seen Smeb win topside. We see Rox Tigers win bottom. So Kuro stayed really far up in the lane despite seeing Steos behind him contesting yeah. for the Raptors. Definitely angled wrong there. I think he could have gone into the river uh, had he been positioning better and he could have just ran out. Um, but unfortunately, Anax with a really nice opportunity and they punish him for it. We'll see if Peanut can answer here in the bottom side of the map. He is fishing for something here in the bottom map, side of the map. And just remember, Gorilla goes in and then you put a trap underneath the target. He knocks up into there. That's the crit. That's, That's a trap. Trap in there for Liquid. Good flush out of the way though. Puts the Bastion up to protect him. And now they're going to turn around Peanut though. Snipes Liquid with a Q but has to dash out. Exhaust was burnt there by Liquid. Yeah, and it's important to note that Rox does not benefit from Oh my the god. Lord. Goes in again. Good stun. But Kuro's going to get reset on. Die perhaps incoming. Kira puts out the Hemo Plate. Kuro's dead again. Hemo Plate goes off and that's enough for the kill. No summoner spells in the mid lane, and Koro is under so much pressure. Very, very aggressive gank from Peanut, showing himself in the bottom lane. He got a lot of summoners, but his mid laner died again. Yeah, and these are the type of ganks that Rox can't benefit from. And we're just taking a quick look at this replay again. And Kuro, again, no summoners. Kira hits level six. Slow comes out there, and they're just able to pick up the kill. And this is so bad. Syndra is not a champion you want to fall behind with because now Vladimir's going to get magic resistance, and Kuro's kill potential is just going to be gone. Exactly, and that's the thing about the Vladimir into Syndra is Vladimir will outscale the Syndra. He will hit a point in the late game where he's just unkillable for the Syndra here, and then it's all about the AD carry taking him down because Smep, he's going to sit in the side lane for most of this game and try and be a split pusher. But if his mid lane loses and you lose that early mid tower, it becomes very difficult to play aggressive in side lanes. Well, good news right now is that two lanes for Rocks are looking good. Smeb with a team that finished early is up about 10 CS or so, and Prey is also up a bit on a miracle on the bottom side, although the crit's been playing very well to keep Peanut mostly out of that situation. So Kira's the one feeling the pressure right now. A summoner Syndra is very vulnerable, and Kira's just playing so in his face right now. 
And right now it looks like Seos is going in for some counter jungling and everything's probably going to re reset right now. Liquid does want to get some vision down, Ooh. but hold on. Flushing on Sigurd really does get the pull of in. Head by there. Peanut going to look for the wraparound with the kick as well, but a great double stun might save him. Ward hops in. Liquid keeping himself alive for so long, but Kuro with the stun gets himself a much needed kill. Yeah, and that's what some of the openings we see teams do against the top, top Korean teams very often, where they actually give them almost a free kill. Your Tarek had no summoner spells, and your jungler had just recalled together with your AD carry. Why do you walk up river to try and put down a ward? It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and the instant it got punished, Gorilla had to use Flash, but right now if Yarda rocks Tigers, you're just trying to stop the bleeding. Right, and right now what we're doing is we're seeing Gorilla roam because Caitlyn has such an advantage in bottom lane, and they know that Annex doesn't really have summoners down there, so Prey is able to just maintain that lane, keep farming, and stay at a safe distance because it's unlikely that Steos is going to be able to make anything happen down there. So Gorilla's trying to reduce the damage that's been done in mid lane. He's trying to apply pressure up there in top lane and just trying to crawl. Oops, that's adorable, in. amazing play for after the Poppy ulti. But Steos trying to close the gap, can't quite get there. Smeb ulties and gets away. Looked very cool, but Smeb, he's, uh, he's pretty chill up there. He knows, nah, I'm not going to die to this. Didn't even have to flash away. And if you are Kuro now, you have to do something we, we talk about from time to time, which is you need to be able to lose your lane gracefully. You need to be able to accept that you won't kill this Vladimir 1v1. You're not going to be the big hero in this game. If you can just keep the minion wave at least in the middle and try and follow the Vladimir if he wants to roam, you're at least adding some value for your team because you have a winning top lane and a winning bot lane already. Yeah, and I definitely like uh, the fact that he's already invested into the tier 2 boots. That means yep. that he will be able to outpace Kira to any sort of a, a fight in River or a Roam or anything. And that'll be his way to recover because he doesn't want to stay in this lane anymore. Stay also the big man on campus for A and X. Huge gank in the top lane with the Runic Echoes. Almost cost Smep his life, but only his ulti. Gonna sneak in the back here for an Ocean Drake though. And level 8 Nidalee at this point, this is easy as it gets as far as jungling goes. And this is a nice little objective lead for Albus Nox Luna. I feel like we see this so often with Nidalee players on blue side now. Sneaking over that little wall because so rarely do you have a ward just outside the dragon pit. And if you just have the Rift Scuttler, it actually doesn't give you vision inside the dragon pit either. Granting a very free objective for Albus Nox. That's really been one of the key strategies for them. Sneaking dragons, sneaking barons. They've had really good macro and actually really good understanding of how to get something extra. Yeah, this tournament I've actually been really, really impressed with Albus Nox Luna. I think that. You know, a lot of people just saw them as very cheesy early on with some of the picks, but they've shown that, you know, even in this game alone, they, they're doing stuff pretty standard and they're just punishing rocks so far. And yeah. as the game moves forward, they do have the luxury that they will scale pretty well. I like the attempt, but not quite there on the stun. Miracle and Lucrit starting to play a bit more aggressively, and Miracle still behind in CS, and Smeb is actually growing his lead quite significantly, but we've seen the team working in the mid-game for Albus Nox Luna. The fans on Twitter certainly like it, and Prey's gonna get himself stunned. Miracle not gonna move back in. Gorilla here for defense, gonna pulverize him out. Miracle will flash out of the way, and Prey gonna live with his flash, but not his heal. Had to burn up there to survive. Oh, interesting, a a Miracle actually flashed so quickly. He maybe thought Peanut was already here, but this gives an opening now for the Rocks Tigers jungler. There is Flash on the Lee Sin. Look for the kick Flash against a target like the Lucian if Dash is being used. Liquid does have ultimate though, so from that angle, it's pretty hard to actually get a kill. So I think he was just there, but hold Doing that as Kuro. 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 get himself faulty? No, just the Hemo play got from Kira and the TP from Smev. He's gonna dissuade them, charging up the Heli Poppy. Smev, who's he gonna kick out of the way? Smev, Smev cancels that TP, and Smev doesn't need to burn the Keeper's Verdict. But Rocks making sure they defend Kuro, they can still feel pressure in that lane. And Sandra, Sandra once again has no summoners in the mid lane. <laughs> Life really sucks for Koro because he, he uses all the summoners, he dies the first time. This time, yes, he stayed alive, but also around him, if you look at this the minimap, there's one pig ward to protect him. Before this, there was absolutely nothing. There was no vision around him. So he just got roamed on, he got ganked multiple times. And this man on your screen, PvP Stehos, he's been such a good jungler. This tournament, he's actually the jungler who deals the most damage in the early game, and he's the most active in the early game when it comes to forcing fights and kills. Peanut is trying to make something happen, Tom, and it's what we talked about earlier, LS. Yep. Peanut with the ulti, trying to snowball some of the side lanes. Yeah, and they, they're they trying to make something happen. Gorilla's here too, so this could actually get a little ugly This is weird, for that Annex. Oh. Thing there was a problem. Gorilla flashes and misses as Stay House will flash himself out of the way. Kuro's here as well. We have a top lane party about to start in Smurf. You, you are not revenge. very safe. They are going to collapse. Going to look for a pillar there from Smurf. Is good flash from Smurf. Gets him up, but now Kira 
Going to try and turn it back around. No ulti here could be a problem, but Rox, four-man strong, have to get out of the way as three men from ANX move to defend this top outer. Yeah, and this does not benefit Ra. It's the same thing that was happening early on. They keep trying to make things happen, and Annex keeps resisting it over and over. And if this keeps going on, then eventually the defensive items from Annex is just going to stockpile, and come mid-game, it's going to get pretty ugly for Elise Sin and Nasindra. And we start seeing some uh, mechanical misplays we don't often see from a support like Gorilla. If you want to headbutt the target and then Q flash after him, you need to do it while he's still flying in the air. So he doesn't have time to flash himself when he actually lands after the headbutt. That would have been an easy kill on, on PvP Steos up in the top lane. But he actually gave him time to flash out, stay alive, and then rocks were chasing. Nothing comes from it. But they are active, and that's the thing again we need to remind everyone. Yes, the mid lane lost from the rocks Tigers, but the side lanes are doing perfectly fine right now. Pressure again, though, as Peanut's gonna look for a line onto the Q. Good pillar. Q's oh. gonna miss Peanut! How did that happen, Smeb? Gonna follow Flash, but Steos is happening. getting out of that. Oh no, Smep. Gonna get collapsed on now as well. Smep gonna chase him down. Kira's here, tied to block for the slow. Smep goes down! And Peanut misplays! That almost never happens, and now he's just forced to run. Just another mechanical mistake, honestly, from the Rocks Tigers, and they're getting punished for it. Red buff, well, Peanut. Oh, that's gross. He smites it away, but the kick's there for Peanut. Stay off too far this time. Peanut gonna chase him, orders him down after the water. But here's a dive mid. Liquid's there with the ult here. Kuro goes down! That was amazing from the Tarek, and they might get away with it as well. Gorilla gonna try and chase it out. Peanut snipes this time. Liquid heals himself, but it's not enough. And Peanut's starting to make plays after that little blunder. Yeah, and Peanut bounces back. Not done. Mistakes, but it, oh, Ooh, Gorilla. Very nice from Gorilla. Kira looks for the dive, but doesn't find out. What a chaotic few minutes there. That was pretty chaotic, and he did salvage the situation. We were criticizing him for some mechanical blunders, but he does bounce back with that, and... This was the play that just happened on mid. We're getting a replay of it now. And Kuro getting locked up. Liquid activating that ultimate, not taking any damage. And this is just pretty cookie cutter. Gorilla tries to come in to try to salvage something. Fortunately, Peanut coming right around from red, and he's able to pick up the kill onto Liquid. Yeah, Liquid could actually have flashed when he saw the Q from Peanut, but he decided to save it, or maybe he just didn't react in time, and then end up flashing when it's actually too late and goes down. Granting another kill over to Peanut. I want to point out that I think it would be correct not to flash the Ur Well, it's arguable not to flash because Dragon is coming up in about a minute, and that would be the second Water Drake. So maybe the value at the time was okay. Maybe we want to conserve this for the big team fight. Yeah, I guess the thing is, don't flash when you do get hit yeah. by the Q as well, because he ended up just doing kind of the both, uh, the worst, no matter what, because either he saves the flash and he just dies, and he has it for team fight. Or he flashes when the Q flies in the air and he just stays alive. You know, he actually just decided to do the worst. <laughs> well, get hit by the Q and then flash after. What the difference? Not yeah. nothing happens <laughs> sometimes. So that Ocean Drake has actually respawned. Now ANX with the first already can maybe poke rocks off it with a big Nidalee looking to build towards that Rylai's. Scuttle Crab, though, does belong to Rox and Peanut will ward the entrance this time, making sure it can't get snuck away. Blue Buff gonna get donated over as well. We'll see how the teams want to set up for this next objective. And when you see some of these comps that in Europe we call the bulldozer comps, which is what Albus Knox have here, where it's like a ghost mid laner who dives the back line, it's a top laner with tons of movement speed who dives the back line. They can really do a lot of damage if they have summoners like Ghost and Flash available in these fights here, because you also have this Terra Gold to back you up. So when you see Elbow's team fight, they're just gonna literally charge at the back line of Rock's Tigers, pop the Terra Gulti, and no one is gonna die. And they're gonna kill these squishies. So once they have summoners like the Dew now, Kira has his flash, Smurf has his flash, Ghost as well for the Vladimir. They're ready to fight for a drag. And they just picked up the first Tower of Blood, and I think it was really nice how they let Steos pick it up because he had the red buff ticking, which is the true damage on turret. So he was able to raise that tower pretty quick and Albus knocks Luna at a 3k advantage already. He's not trying to pressure. Does he get a kick? No, the flash is going to keep Stale sad the way. Smurf made it already as Smurf TPs his way down. Nice stun on Sekiro from Kuro, who is zoned out of this pit right now. A and X, they can just pop the sums and go if they want. Yeah, it's so hard for Rock's Tigers to team fight right now unless they can catch a member out because five men together, Albus is so powerful with this Tarek as well, just shielding as many members as possible. Possible. And again, look for them to just dive onto someone like Koro. They want something here. Kira ulti's on to Smeb. He's going to dive and zone the backline away. Ba uh, ulti from Tarek's going to keep them alive. But Gorilla caught out in the front trying to make a play. Maybe gets his way out as Liquid actually in the front side. Smeb takes him down. Peanut kicks in Smurf. 
and Rox do get the pick they're looking for. That was a really big salvage of a team fight for the Rox Tigers, and this is what they've been doing all tournament. They fall behind, and it looks like everything's going well for the other team, but Rox Tigers, one of the things that they are known for is their team fighting. So when it gets into these brawls, this is where they really start to excel, and even if they have a gold deficit, they know what to do when the fight breaks out. Yeah, and they honestly just completely outplayed the enemy in that team fight. That wasn't supposed to be an easy one for zero, and, and that's it. But Albus were very split up. Kira dived in too early, just alone. Smith wasn't even in position to follow him. Dragon is being started. Very persistent, but Stayos is gonna get stunned up here. Gorilla picks him off, and Smith gets another kill. They'll get the drink in themselves as well, and Rocks starting to turn this game back around. Yep, and that was a little bit weird by Seos because he had the vision of Gorilla. We're going to take a look at this replay again really quick. So they're trying to make everything happen. I actually thought they had Gorilla Licorice casts his ultimate, and I thought Gorilla was going to go down. He headbutts Licorice into the tower. They burst Licorice, and Gorilla does manage to get out. And then Peanut, with an insect kick onto Smurf, almost picked him up too. And simply just not enough coordination there for Albus and how to play that comp. It's kind of one member diving the backline on his own. First of Vladimir, then the Tarek follows up. The puppy never got there because Smurf was trying to make a crazy play from the bush just outside of the fight. And that's not how you want to play this comp. We talked about it just before. Vlad, Poppy, Tarek, all three together. They are going for Prey. They're going for Koro. But you need to go together. If yep. you go in one by one, you allow Rocks to just kite back, single you out, and then actually punish you like we saw Gorilla and the Rocks Tigers do here. And I like it from Liquid. He's really, when he teams up with Kiri, you can see how hard it is for them to kill this Vladimir. So much MR. Got the Aegis to help him out as well, plus the Tarek W for extra armor. This is problematic across the board, but Rox are continuing to make plays. Do they find one? They found Liquid. Great kick in into the pulverize for the alley oop, and see you later. Tarek, oh! The flash, not enough. Nice crit from Prey. Yep, and now it looks like they're going to rotate to try to get the top tower, but Kuro and Peanut going back to the mid lane. Since Kira's pushing that, and Smeb is in the bottom lane, so everything's starting to even out again. Baron is coming up in 14 seconds, and one of the things that we have seen Albus Nox Luna do this tournament is Baron comebacks. They've snuck Baron against so many teams, and when they began to, you know, drop the ball, they recovered it via Baron. Yeah, it's kind of funny how the two teams who couldn't beat Albus Nox Luna were G2 and CLG. And there were teams where you could have you know, questions about the late game decision making, team fighting, and so on. And Albus have actually been able to outplay them and sneak some of these barons and not get punished for some missed positions in team fights. The Rox Tigers, however, are just like that level above. So they punish you if you make a mistake in a fight in terms of the setup, in terms of who's going in where. And also, they rarely give away free objectives like a baron out of nowhere. So Albus really have to show something more if they want to finish this game because despite having a great start, they've been handing over quite some kills now to the Rox Tigers. Yeah, and this is something that you don't want to do because the Rox Tigers, if you give them an inch, they will take it a mile. And that's something that we've seen this whole tournament and even the first game of the day where one mistake just started that avalanche and they weren't able to, or G2 was not able to come back. They're just such a crisp team and they've kind of retaking control of the game. I think ANX, the pace has slowed down. They've been played very fast and loose for the first 10 to 15 minutes, but we'll see how they set up for the next big objective. Could be one of those big Baron kind of Baron's early, like you mentioned before, but we'll see how they kind of line it all up. Only one tower, Rocks do have a pretty small map to play with, so there is that consideration as well, but the game has kind of slowed down now that we've hit the 21 minute mark, and that has to favor Rocks Tigers. Definitely so, just uh, not in terms of pure scaling, but the fact that you just get to complete like one to two items is so huge, because if you start falling behind early, in the early item spikes, it tends to be like, oh, you didn't complete one full item, and they already did, so that's a big advantage, or maybe two items to one and a half. Now they've been able to get some items here, Prey's almost getting his uh, eye edge as well, which is a huge spike for him, and this trundle in the side lane, it's only going to get stronger. When you play Poppy against Trundle, you want to leave that lane as much as possible and TP into team fights. Because yep. that's where you have value as a Poppy. And one of the things that... Oh, well, hold that thought. Probably actually getting cold here. Liquid looking for a stun. Miracle flashes in! Aggressive play, but it works out. Prey just caught farming alone. Yeah, and probably going to get a replay of that and say that was very surprising. They also got both of his summoner spells. And so... That's pretty bad, and that's another tower, and hold that We're thought. at it again, because Kuro is going to get him plugged up by Kiri. Runs all the way around the turret. Going to try and get in, but Gorilla playing defense is going to not let that happen. Stayos high fives his mid laner as they walk through the enemy jungle, and this just seems all standard for them at this point. 
Because right now, what I would like to see Annex do is actually have just committed four to top lane because Rox was cut off. Ooh. That would have guaranteed them a top tier two tower. Well, they're getting another fight. Back in for it again. It looks like Liquor wants a big play, but doesn't really have too much. They've got the Taric Ultimate if they want to look for a dive, but Rox, again, starting to lose a little control here as ANX continue to play up and aggressive. Yeah, definitely don't like seeing a Caitlyn being left alone in a side lane. She's one of the most useless champions sitting there trying to defend because it's so easy to get onto her and dive her. Prey was caught before. We didn't get to see the replay because we had more fights happening, and ANX potentially threatening a dive. It is 4v4, so it's very risky, and they do decide to back away, but this is, again, the position they want to be in. A lot of members together, especially Vladimir and Tarek together with the ulti on of Vladimir diving that back line. So it's kind of a race as well. Smurf and Smeb will meet, trying to get their way up to the top lane. ANX a a almost took a tier two turret in top of that as well. So two turrets to zero right now, but Rox making it work again. And one of the things that I don't want to see Annex do is try to take a team fight because they have so much on-field gold right now. They have not recalled in a while. They've gotten a lot of global gold. So had they taken a fight, even though they're up in gold, they would have been down in gold in terms of on-field resources. Well, everything kind of subsides there. Rocks look to kind of push me, but don't get it down to Peanut. Won't find Smurf in the back, and he will complete that recall safely. So gold should be spent. ANX still up 2,000 gold and two turrets. So there's a slim lead here for them, but it's starting to shrink effect in effective value as you get later into the game. Yeah, glad to see though they kind of relaxed a little bit after opting into a lot of crazy fights earlier because here they got that top tower. They pushed for another one but realized Rox is here to defend. They backed away, they just walked into mid lane, stopped the push and kind of reset the whole thing. I assume he dashes forward with the stun. Yes, he does. Straight on to prey. He doesn't react in time. And then it is too late. Once you get stunned and chunked to 50%, Lucian will never let you escape. One of the interesting things about uh, this build from Lucian, the Yumu Black Cleaver build, is that it's likely that the only person that's going to build armor early on is Smeb, so Lucian is hitting like a truck in this mid-game. Especially against those squishies. Rocks in the meantime. Sorry, ANX! Can't see my players. Do take another trick for themselves. Do get the cloud. Rocks, of course, has the equalizing ocean, but objective control on that bottom half still going their way. Yeah, and this is such a problem now for the Rocks Tigers because Smep is not strong enough to just dominate the 1v1 on top side. It goes fairly even. Poppy just tries to wave clear. And that gives so much time for the four members of ANX now with his Lucian on two items, the Vladimir on two items, to actually play aggressive on the rest of the map. Smep is even going to interrupt Smep here to send That's him rude. a lovely little message. And Smep replies by taking his pink ward, so... I'm not really sure who wins out in that one. Um, no Pick one. for for recall stuff. This is like, I, my jugglers here, I bet you. And no one's buff gets cold, and that's fine. Pushing them in the mid lane is Peanut looking for a big old flank. Oh, Q goes wide. But Rox do defend the mid outer. This yeah. last mid tower, though, is uh, kind of the last defense for Rox at the moment when it comes to defending for a potential Baron. Because if that tower goes down and ANX pushes them back to tier two towers, that's a top side jungle gone, and that's Baron vision gone. And then suddenly, this bulldozer comp will start a Baron and force you to come team fight them. Yeah, and one of the issues though that Annex's comp has going for them right now is they don't really have a lot of wave clear, so they're heavily reliant on ultimates and summoners to penetrate towers. Flash order from Smurf slows down Smurf. Good ulti. No, he gets kicked out of the way. How did that work? Is Prey gonna still chase him down? Trap slate everyone. Oh, oh my oh. god, he runs the line. And Prey's got red buff, but Stales is here. They're gonna turn it around. Prey almost gets shot. But Kira flashes in. ANX just turned it on his head and Pina slammed into the wall. ANX turned it up for the double. This is insane. They are actually beating the Rox Tigers right now. Three members chased for Smurf, but the traps came down late. Two guys get knocked away. Baron is being started now. They might actually be able to get this. I don't think that the Rox Tigers are in position to deny, and it doesn't even look like they're gonna try to do it. So Rox gonna fall back, concede their turrets, and try to pick this up in the, the later stages of the game. But Annex doing the unthinkable, and they're looking like they're, they're looking poised to win this game. Their composition is so good to win these late game team fights. We talked so much about it already. Let's see the replay. Three members diving, in and Smurf thing just gets. The hit onto two guys. Prey tries to finish it. The traps come down one by one by one. Too late with the last one. And then, well, Albus Nux is here. And now Prey and Peanut are kind of left alone. Oh. Nice little water up there. Prey, lots of mechanical mistakes from Prey this game on this Caitlyn. And it's really starting to hurt as the game draws on. And as we saw, unfortunately, one of the people that died was Peanut, which means that the Baron Steel that saved him against G2 was not available either. Alvis knocks Luna.
poised for maybe the biggest upset of the tournament, although given their form, I'm not sure I can call it that. 5,000 gold up with a Baron. Yeah. Rocks batting down the hatches. The Storm's here. With Albus, we just have to look at the entire run in this group stage and call that one the absolute biggest upset we've ever seen. They came in here, no one expected anything from them. I mean, Kira's caught, I say that in air quotes, actually taking damage now, but pulls out of the way. Mitara falls, Lucret pops the ultimate as Gorilla's forced away. Smurf gonna TP into that mid lane, and this might be a force. I've seen this before, but they actually sow some restraint. They've got the objective already, they've got the Baron. Slow play it, just play with your lead. There is no need to get too crazy in this game, because they're already so far ahead. Yeah, and now Rox Tiger is going to try to turtle this out. Fortunately for them, a Cloud Drake is the next one spawning, so it's not an Infernal or a Mountain, which honestly, that would be pretty bad because they're not in position to take it. And a Siege happening here on Tier 2. No ultimate, though, on Lucian. The Puppy! Murph's in, he finds Prey. That's a flash out instantly. The crit flashes forward, looking for the stun. Doesn't get it. Turret is going to fall in amongst the mess, but Liquid's going to go down as well. Prey sniped on out, but Smurf's into the wall. That's a kill, one for one. A and X going to take one more down. In the end, they get a one for one. A bit of a sloppy engage from Albus Nox. Luna here didn't actually manage to get any CC on Prey, even though he was the target when they dove. But again, this composition, when you have things like Vladimir, Poppy, Terry, like these kind of champions, big bruises, they can just ignore your tower. They can just go for the backline instantly. And that's what they're trying to do. So they go for Prey. Sadly, don't get any CC on him. Yeah, they don't get any CC. Lictra ends up going down. Now, they do get the tower. So even though they trade one for one, they do get an objective. So it's still a win for them. Smeb goes down right at the end there. Good stun in. Ulti from Kuru is enough here. Q misses again. Peanut! He thought that actually he was going to flash. He thought he was going to flash instantly and he would try to predict the flash. Sad yeah. for him. Steos. He guessed wrong, unfortunately. I wasn't guess. Uh, ready to flash instantly. And he stays alive. And that really tells this, the story of this game for the Rocks Tigers. Yeah, they're really desperate right now. They use summoners to try to make that happen and it didn't. And so now, Dragon coming up in 50 seconds. Rock's Tiger is probably going to concede this, and we're going to see a very big turtle game come out from them because they need to claw their way back into this game. But Annex is in the driver's seat right now. Exactly, and again, Annex will just pick up another Dragon if they want to. They can wait for another Baron to spawn as well. They have enough time, but they can also just go aggressive against the Rock's Tigers in their own base. When you have all summoners, especially the Ghost from Kira, is important. Pop the Ghost, the Proto Belt, and a Terra Golty. And that Vladimir will take out your carries. Well, you can see three lanes starting to push now for ANX. Baron has dropped off, so pressure's not as hot as it was before, but they can just rotate around, look for very easy turret dives with the Tarek Vladimir and the Poppy of Smurf going down as well. TP not up just yet, but setting up for another siege here. And remember, if Albus knocks Luna, oh, never mind, that Peanut. That was hilarious. <laughs> Peanut <laughs> travels all the way over, but just to get him out of the jungle. But if Albus Nox Luna wins this game, they're guaranteed a spot in the quarterfinal because they're also their 2-0 record versus CLG. Even if they tie them, it won't matter. They will be in the quarterfinal. It is so huge for this team. And again, as we talked about earlier, such a big surprise. It's not about winning one or two games anymore. It's about getting out of this group against teams like G2, Rock Tigers and CLG. Yeah, and this is going to be their ticket to do it, but it looks like they will need probably another Baron if they want to be able to finish off this game. And honestly, the gold deficit, it is 7k. It's not like the Tigers haven't come back from worse before. So while Annex is in you know, the driver's seat and they're in position to take this down, the Tigers are still fighting. Definitely so. Just a much weaker comp for the Tiger strategy. Get back in these fights. There's no big cannon ulti going to happen from a Trundle. It's not even close. You have a mid laner who is behind, and Syndra, once we get to late game against things like Tarek and his insane ulti, obviously, in team fights, won't be able to one shot a target. So it, it's really difficult for the Rocks Tigers to actually now get back in this. I'm basically looking at Prey being the big hero. Yeah, and one of the things I want to see is I want to see Stehos get that Zhonya's and I want to see Smurf go for Guardian Angel because with those two items, the towers just won't exist and they're able to take that dive or that bulldoze, as you mentioned, just one step further and that's something that Rox currently does not have the ability to handle. And where's the own breaker? <laughs> they don't no, go there, just finish the game straight away. I don't need it, I don't know. I think if they bought it, they'd be like, what do I click on? There's nothing here to use <laughs> no it No one on. actually knows that item. Does it even exist anymore? Oh, yeah, it does. Is Steos going to try and steal this blue? Kuro says no. That is my blue. 
They're not going to smite it down, and that should go over to the intended recipient. Kuro does collect the buff for himself. So cute. Rock's going to defend what they can and throw in jungle, but Anax still looking to push it down. Baron in a minute. Elder Dragon will be the next spawn as well. The game's not over yet. Anax do need to do a little more work to break into the base, but they'll have all the tools yep. to do so as the map reopens for those big objectives. Back, you get five pink wards. AD carry, sell your Doran's Blade, get a pink ward yourself. Set it up around that Baron. Preferably also one in the jungle of the Rocks Tigers. And then you can start the Baron. You can see them move towards you. And you have these summoners. You have the TP flank to take that big team fight where Rocks Tigers will be out of position. Yep. And Baron coming up here in 30 seconds. And it's going to be a fight. It's going to come down to vision fights around Rocks' red side jungle. And a lot of pressure is on Peanut right now. He's also down a level, which does affect his smite. This is not just losing the Baron, it's losing towers, it's losing shutdown gold. That gold gap is just gonna be completely gone. Yeah, because Rox Tigers, they didn't kill a single tower yet in this game here. They're so far behind in terms of map pressure. But that does, of course, mean you can get a crazy good Baron power play, as Ellis just highlighted with a lot of early times. Ooh, Kira flashes out, Protobot spawn! Finds the two carries with Hemo play, Gorilla locked up again. Peanut trying to find a way in, but the ulti from Tarek says no. And the flashing from Lucas gonna get the stun. Stayos gets one as Kuro goes down. Gorilla lowers Peanut's forced to get out of their prey. Doing good damage here on the back line. Anex can't get too antsy here, but Gorilla goes back in, finds the pole and flashes out because he's got no ulti. But Smurf rides his Oyun going absolutely nuts. Finds a few as prey for to get up, but Miracle flashes in now, and Anax bulldoze down mid lane. He rushed towards the back line, led by Kira again. He's the man charging first. That's an inhib, and they're That's going straight towards the Baron. They're going straight to the Baron pit, and this might come down to a smite fight. Stayho's two level smite advantage over Peanut. That is so big at this level of play. And also, Rock Tigers, they're going to be the ones having to face check everything here. Got pretty much no vision by the looks of things and actually not doing it. So again, another bit of restraint showed there. Yeah, and they don't want to do it. This is the only way Rocks can come back in the game is if Annex messes up here and if they get a Hail Mary Baron. All you have to do, reset, buy new items, and then just fix your lanes. And then Rock Tigers are going to be the one under pressure and mid is exposed. Yeah, if you want to play it super safe, wait for your summoners on his Vlad because this is why he needs Ghost and Flash. When he does dive in, he looks at both the Caitlyn and Syndra and he just goes straight for him. He's not really at risk of dying at any point because once he finally takes damage, Terra Gold just follows up. Great flash in from the crit and then Seos can follow up and actually kill Koro. And really, really good setup from Albus Nox. And there's just so little this composition from the Rock Tigers can do against these big bruisers diving that back line. That's why you cannot fall behind against things like Vladimir Terry. You're supposed to beat them in the early game, not fall further behind. Here's the pressure starting off. ANX have just gone for the Baron Rock. Get all the wards in there. Peanut might have to find another smite. ANX gonna force their hand. Peanut cues in. Has tagged him with time Smurf. away. Ready with the keeper's verdict. Kira and Lakrita 2v2ing on the other side. And Peanut, he's got no it's fight. Peanut. Get in! Goes in for it again! No, oh, Kuro got, got it! The Kuro! And Rocks, they keep the dream alive! Kuro with the Hail Mary on the Baron. That is going to keep them in this game. That is not what Annex wanted to happen. It came down to one spell just now. Had they gotten that Baron, you know they would just bulldoze right up mid lane and Rox wouldn't be able to stop it. And again, that's where you got a question. Taking the Baron in the first place, was it really needed? Go get that bot lane tier 2 tower instead. Heck, you can even dive once you have your Summoners on your Vladimir without a Baron buff. That Baron buff is not going to buff you enough as an individual player to really make a big difference when you're this far ahead. Let's see what happens and with this smite as well from the Nidalee. So everyone is busy on the bottom side. Peanut actually flashed a Poppy ulti up here on top. And where is the smite from Steos? In here, I mean, Lee Sin trying to go for the Q. Peanut trying to get in there, but it's actually Kuro who gets it, which is so surprising. I mean, both junglers actually botched the Baron smite. And now the game is going to reset. But as you mentioned, Officio, they should have executed a 1-0-4. Pulled them away from the Baron side of the map. Elder Dragon's coming up. It's so difficult for Rox to gain control of the blue side jungle and raise that tier 2 bottom turret. Yeah, exactly. Baron buff really doesn't add a lot of value for the champions. Yes, it buffs up the minions, but you're not sieging. You're fighting them under their tower. Well, we'll see what Rox can do with it here because they had some big Baron power plays both domestically and maybe in the tournament as well. Hey, first tower. Torrent, first one, it's a good one. Mid out, it goes down. Rocks 
clawing their way back into another game with yet one more Baron Steel. Buys a bit of time, honestly, for the Rocks Tigers to get whatever gold they can. They're still not looking for any big fights. If they can catch out one member who split up from Albus Knox, they can take him down and they can get a 4v5. Straight on 5 versus 5, it's really, really difficult to do a whole lot. They look towards Eldrick or maybe just want to fix that bottom lane. Big wave. Everyone yeah. is alive, though. Now there is a 6k gold deficit, but if we're looking at the items alone right now, yes, Annex has an advantage, but it's not as big as it once was. And so the team fights are going to be a lot closer now than they were previously. And with Elder Dragon being the focus, uh, yes, NX has almost all of their summoners up. You see a miracle just waiting on his flash. Uh, Peanut not having his flash is actually, I think, a lot more valuable. Uh, considering he needs to get that insect off in order to win his team the team fight. Well, they're going towards the Elder Dragon now. They're going to just clear out the vision. There's a ward right on top of the pit for Rock, so a &X with no sweepers right in the area or available. I'm going to go for it just yet. Mid and hip should respawn relatively soon as well, so Rocks have kind of brought the game once again back to a calm situation. We had this again about 22 minutes in where Rocks slowed some of the bleeding and controlled the game again, and Anex broke it wide open, so yeah. if that happens again, the game will probably end on the spot at this stage. I just feel like we see some teams in their mind, they're like, oh, we need Baron to finish the game, or we need Elder Drake to finish the game, when in fact you don't always need these objectives. If you are just winning every team fight and you have ways to avoid damage from turrets, you don't care. So now they're starting an another Elder Drake that actually gives Rox, Rox Tigers a chance to move in. They see all members from ANX on the map. They can either, either steal the dragon or actually get a good fight where flank is suddenly difficult for Smurf. He can't TP anywhere. He can't TP flank. He's right in front of the Rox Tigers. Yeah, and this is really bad because if NX backs off here, it enables Rox Tigers to actually go mid lane with the incoming minion wave and they can actually raise a tower again. So. There's a bit of a fort going on right now where Inex can't start this Elder Drake, and now we're going to see this rotation. And this is a standard mistake that a lot of top teams make, and I'm wondering if the nerves are starting to get to Inex. I have to think that maybe they are, because it is a difficult situation. Kira flashing, looking for a carry again. That was huge, because he just lost two summoners, and he achieved absolutely nothing. This team is overforcing right now. They're overthinking everything. Could have been so simple, and now you have this Weird situation in the mid lane, but both teams kind of looking for an opening, not finding anything. But now Rock's the one with the summoner spell advantage, and this is the position that they want. They want to bring it down to a team fight. This is what they're adept at. Uh, you know, there's a lot of options that ANX has available to them, but they didn't take it, and now they're funneling into the. We have to win. We have to win this team fight. We've got to get Elder Dragon. We just got to take them out in a team fight and blitz up mid. Yeah. And it's not like anything that they were showing us for the first half of this game. And it's a little bit weird. And the flash and the summoner spell usage on Akira and the protobelt, really uncharacteristic from his plays so far. Feels a little desperate, I think is the best way to put it, because they have the game right there, ready to take over. But Rox, as they always do, gonna you know, delay it for as long as they can. And they're just running A and X in circles, honestly, around Summoner's Rift at this stage. Mid's still wide open, but Rox's gonna cut back towards the Elder Dragon, threaten to take it away. A and X, they need something here, but Rox will just keep playing around if they can afford to. Setting up here with the traps, trying to block some choke points. Oh no. Yeah, the Smurf got stunned. Good stun there, actually gonna stop some of it, but a pinch is coming in from the Nidalee here. Spear's starting to get thrown in. If they hit the squishies, they do significant damage, and this might be the track ANX needs to retake mid. Oh my god, they found Peanut, but he's actually relatively tanky. Gorilla's gonna go back over, he misses that pole. And we're gonna reset once again. Everything is so split on the map, like five ANX members are just either in the mid lane, in the jungle, in the bottom lane. There's a big wave pushing top, and there's an open in here. But no one is able to properly engage a fight here. Oh. That's an hourglass. There's the Terracol, do they have to use it? Gorilla actually gonna get chunked down, but he pops his ultimate now. Kira is still bottom lane. He actually got the tier 2 turret we thought they would get before, and he's starting to apply a lot more pressure. This is decent from ANX. They've reset well to try and retake this mid inhibitor and maybe get more. Yeah, they have out-rotated rocks here, and now they're looking to make something happen up in top, and I don't think anything's going to happen here, but Baron, though, coming up in 40 seconds, so now there's going to be choices for both teams. And these teams, for the last five minutes or so, have looked very indecisive. Exactly. The Rocks Tigers, they know they can't take an open team fight and realistically win it until maybe they hit four items. But they might not have enough time. Gorilla tries to go in. 
He has no ulti, remember? Used yeah. it before. It's actually very squishy. There's a spear here. Takes a decent chunk of his health down, and now two valves open in the Rocks Tiger's base. That pressure is just starting to mount. Smev, huge with that GA at level 18. Like, Rocks can maybe find something if they get the right fight for ANX. They are so close to taking this game, but it is not done yet. Nope, and it looks like they're backing off. They don't want to throw, because if they if they botched a team fight right there, that would have meant that Rock Tigers gets Baron, and they probably get a few towers, and they get Elder Dragon. So, not wanting to take that risk, they reset, and they say, hey, we can take another position. We just out-rotated them once. We can do it again. Flash almost ready for Kira. Won't have Ghost for a potential fight. But really, the fact that Smurf has not been able to actually have any sort of TP pressure in these late game fights has made it very hard for ANX to force a proper team fight. It's kind of like we saw earlier where it's one guy running in first, and then when he runs back, another guy runs in. Instead of coordinating the TP coming from the puppy or the flank when he's pushed the side lane and moves in, when he charges towards the back line, well, then Kira flashes forward, and you have two guys at least collapsing at once, making it much easier to lock down a target like Caitlyn. And this is just not the pace that ANX want to be playing at. They had such a good start to the game once again. And we have to do talk about the Rocks Tigers early game a bit because it did seem a little shaky once more. But as they almost always do, they brought the game back. And this is now within touching distance or maybe even better than that for the Tigers. They've got like a lot of different things to kind of juggle here. They're spinning a lot of plates on top of some sticks. But if none of them fall... Yeah, so many nice things on this map they want. Like, give me Baron, give me Elder Drake. I want that inhib as well. In fact, all you actually need to care about is just get that big team fight, even in the base of the Rocks Tigers. That's actually what you're looking for, because that's your best way to win the game, not by trying to get every objective on the map. And one thing that's important to note is that ANX is done with their items. They're all at six items with the exception of Likrit. So even though they keep getting gold, it doesn't matter anymore, you know, except for Elixirs. So Rocks Tigers now, every amount of gold that they get matters that much more because it means that they're going to be able to bring it to a six item versus six item team fight. There's only one pink ward for Albus Nox Luna now. It's in the inventory of the support, but that pink ward needs to be in the Baron pit if you want to make any sort of plays around it. Right now, it's not. Yeah, Rox have plenty of vision in the back there as Kira nice. is nice. soloing. Smurf's going to join if he oh, doesn't no. have that much DPS, and Smurf's just going to breeze by it. Kira still going, but he took too much damage there. That was a little unnecessary. Is he still trying to do it? Yeah, he he is. yeah, he's actually juggling the aggro. And we talked about oh, surprising plays from ANX. This is one of them. Oh my, and Rox doesn't have any idea. This is going to oh be Elder Dragon. God. Oh my god, they found out. Rox, they have to make it down ASAP, but it's too late. Stay on spears it. And ANX steal another massive objective. This time, it's the biggest one. They are the kings of cheese, Demetrio. <laughs> They're so good at sneaking objectives. Rocks were like, totally, the Baron's gonna be the focus, you know, just keep defending around Baron, we're fine. And then Elder Drake, there was actually a ward from the Rocks Tigers. They knew the Drake was being started. I think it was but later. it came too I late. Think, it it's came when Elder Dragon was a 2000. Dragon. I think, I think it late. is. We'll have to double check that, but ANX now with the pressure. You talk about the fight they're looking for. Very well empowered the fight, and Kira's just in here. Smeb with a decent amount of damage as Kira's forced to pull away. Gorilla can't find it as the flash will be burnt. Smeb kicks one out. It's Gorilla who's going to get moved out of the way, but Rock's still fighting. Smeb looking to bite onto Stahos, does not get it. And the mid hit's already down. Pressure point one starting to get pushed here by ANX. Yeah, and it was definitely a blue trinket as you highlighted earlier, so they didn't actually have full vision of anything when it happened. And now this base is open. Enix now looking at that Baron again. Yep. And can they close? That's going to be the question. Now, Elder Dragon might actually run out unless they just elect to burst it down here. Looks like there's about 30 seconds left on it. I mean, they're just going to go for it. It's basically a bait to fight us here, Rocks. Here's Peanut. It might even be worth fighting over, but ANX, they're going to try and take it here. Can they get the fight? Kira gets burst to down. Kuro manages to take him out, but now it's a 4v5. Kuro getting jumped on, almost gets solid as Peanut slammed into a wall, and the GA is going to get popped. Big ulti from Tank, going to keep him alive, but Prey gets exhausted and still does so much damage. Smurf going to try and clean house, and Miracle needs to kite for his life. Smurf going to get caught up there, and Rocks turn it around for a 4-1 team fight. Smurf Murph, that GA is down, he will get popped by Baron Spikes. And they're just gonna chase him down again. Smurf, can he take one down? No, he can't as he gets ulted. Uh, eat out there by Syndra, and that's another kill. Miracle, the only one to get away. Kira had no pool, he had already used it on the engage from Gorilla, and then finally Kora got in a position to actually take him down together with the rest of Rock's Tiger. So that's a one team fight 
in the late game because Albus again were so split up. That's a Baron. Does help the Rocks Tigers at least prevent it from going over to Albus Nox so they can't buff up the super minions. Kira has no pool right now. Kira has no pull, he was too far forward, and Kuro lands the stun, and they delete him from the team fight. From here, they turn the 5v4. They almost get Kuro, but it was not enough, and then Prey's positioning in his team fighting was phenomenal. The ultimate came out from Liquor, it was not enough. Peanut resurrects from Guardian Angel, finds damage onto Annex, and they drop the fight. And this is what I was talking about, about the Rocks Tigers. This is what they do. They team fight their way back into the match, and the next team fight, ANX is down an item because the Guardian Angel from Poppy is gone. Same one for, for Pina, though, had his popped as well in the last fight. Smep still has his GA at the moment as the only member. It's his award, he's also doing <laughs> He's carrying the yeah. banner. There you go, you have the GA, go in and die twice, <laughs> basically. But this again actually just allows Rox to kind of delay the game a little bit. They're not really able to use the Baron specifically to go rush into the enemy base, they just prevent the other team from taking it and buffing multiple lanes of super minions. But we can go back to something we talked about 20 minutes ago. That Baron is still not needed to win late game team fights if you are Albus Nox Luna. They can still actually play aggressive. All they need is summoners. Well, you're gonna try and push down the last remaining lane. Inhibitors still pushing super minions forward here for ANX in top and mid. So that one fight they're looking for they can maybe take here, but Rocks have already shown that goal difference is here on your screen. Start ignoring it because everyone is built up full. It's just about the execution, how they play the team fights. And ANX, yes, they've shown good aggression, but Rocks' team fighting is immaculate. And Frey, we saw him in the last fight doing work. He's got six real items now as Caitlyn. Yeah, and Caitlyn just picked up the Phantom Dancer. Prey is going to be so slippery in these team fights. So if ANX doesn't have their flash up on Smurf, doesn't have it up on Steos, they don't have a reliable way to get onto him if Kira gets knocked away by Gorilla. Tense, tense moment. Two lanes of super minions, one lane with an inhib turret. That's all Rox Tigers have right now to defend. Tons of traps being put up, making it very hard to siege on it. Also with low range champions like Lucian. Listening to what you want is the big team fight. Rox Tigers, as long as they're dodging some of the poke, can keep trying to wait clear. Prey, I think he's the real target. He has to be so careful not to get mispositioned. Smurf and Smurf dueling it out in the top lane. It'll just be a bit of teleport pressure, but not too much from this point. And that one crit onto a Tarek is pretty tanky. Eats a third of his health bar or so. An ANX. Oh no! Smurf caught here. Kira with the damage. Gorilla gonna follow in, and that's gonna be a kill! 5v4 now for Roxas. Kira gonna have to probe her out to safety. Does heal a lot here. Pina, we're gonna re engage, but he's just a little too hard to kill. Bot lane tower taking a lot of damage. Actually goes down here. Last inhib turret is now gone. Rox Tigers did pick up a kill. Will reset everything one more time. Yep, but that is more beneficial for ANX. The objective for a kill, not worth it in the end. It's not like they got any summoners or anything. Well, they did get the ghost out of Kira. Um, but other than that, it, it's not beneficial enough. But this Elder Dragon, gonna come up again. Baron, gonna come up again. Yep. It's gonna be the same song in a dance. And Ox Tigers, they're looking like as the game progresses on, that their team fighting is more on point. And that's exactly what we expect from a team like the Rox Tigers. They have shown that in Korea they could dominate early and early to mid and really make things happen. At Worlds, early game has been a lot shakier and ANX have demonstrated that once again. But this is just one team fight now. Almost a coin flip for who's going to win this game. We're 51 minutes in. We've had some ridiculous games at Worlds and this may take the cake. We'll have to see how it ends. But Rox, they've shown they can hold on. I think 30 minutes ago, LS said yeah. they just need to defend. You're a genius. They did defend for 30 minutes. They did. Albus not been able to win the game yet. And while it's been a crazy game, back and forth, you know, team fights won from both sides, the crazier thing to me is still the fact we're watching a game between Albus Nox Luna and Rox Tigers, and Albus is still ahead and actually looked to win the game. It's just very, very difficult for them to actually close it. They're gonna definitely look back at this game and look at so many different openings and realize, oh, here we could have done something different, and here we could have done something different. In the end, they might still win because of how good their composition is. Yep. But it's definitely a lot harder now when everyone is on six items and one mistake can lose you the game.
Caitlyn, though, is on an entire item, whereas Lucian still does have the tier two boost, though. So there is more punching power coming out of Ooh, Prey. Ooh, that Mirs and Smurfs back in, but it's only the tanks he's found. It's never going to get stunned up by the tower, but Roxa starting to really just play forward and push ANX back towards their base, which, given the base situation in the back, is not really what we expect to happen. And look at the lanes in top and bottom. This is orchestrated by the Rocks Tigers, where everything is shoving at once. So they're able to just push up mid, but Kuro eating a spear to the face. That's going to definitely uh, slow He'll their burn. plan. Kuro hates this game. <laughs> like, absolutely hates this game. From level one, he was the target. Still getting poked quite a bit. He's had a few good late game team fights here. Actually managed to get that kill on Kira before. But that's really been the only highlight for the Rocks Tigers mid laner in this game. And to think that ANX were A, winning this game handily at some point, and the Rocks Tigers have brought it back is one thing. But if ANX win this game, it's because they out macroed and out team fought the Rocks Tigers. That shouldn't happen. But here at Worlds 2016, it may just happen, Rocks. They've kept this game. So much closer than maybe it should have been, but credit to them for keeping it here. And we might go over an hour at this point, though. Major buffs are respawning, but the teams really just need to capitalize on whatever openings they can find. And Rox is starting to play up more, and ANX, those nerves might be getting to them. It's getting shakier and shakier by the minute, and Rox starting to fill with confidence. Yeah, and you know, as you just mentioned, patient time, the nerves. This is ANX going up against who everyone thought probably was the favorites to win this tournament. And they're here at the world stage and they're fighting for first place in their group. And everything was going well for them early and mid game. But now as the game keeps drawing out into the later stages, stuff is going for them, but not as well. And you have to wonder how it's affecting their mentality and are they just starting to shake? Oh yeah, surely they must have questioned themselves now the last 20 minutes. I mean, did we actually go for the right thing? Should we go for Baron? Should we go for Drake? Should we maybe try to really close out the game when we were winning every single team fight and we actually had the composition to go even aggressive, you know, more aggressive dive through turrets. Ooh. That's a misclick. Oh. That's a very costly misclick. Luckily for him, I don't think Rox actually saw him do it, so they don't know the item is on cooldown. Yep. They do not know. There was no vision on... Oh! Catch again. Smurf can okay. look for Smurf. This is Rock Portal in the bottom side, by the way, because Likra bought one. That actually might be enough to force more pressure there, because ANX once again are dancing around this Baron and either trying to take it or force Rocks into a fight that ANX can win. But Rocks, they played this before. They played it wonderfully last time. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, the Rocks Tigers, they cannot start the Baron because that finally gives oh! Alvis a chance to flank. That was a good spear from Steos. He has a lot of AP on this Nidalee. That second oh. fear almost looked like it hit, and ANX have the inside track. They're gonna shove down mid. Rocks, what's the response here? Give it up for now, but then Botland Inhib is another target Ooh. for ANX. And then you go back and you wait for Super Minions to start getting into the enemy base. And then you start going towards Baron one more time. Oh, oh, oh Kira. Again. Gorilla finds one, but there's the ulti. Kira gonna eat Kura's ultimate, but Likra finds Kuro with the stun. And he's gonna have to back away. Tarek ulti does time out and pray. Dodges out of a spear. Smurf is pretty tanky. Peanut, we're gonna try and find a way back in, but this could turn on a dime. Smurf in the front lines, biting through the front members. And Gorilla tries to go, but he gets blocked by Poppy. Blocked again from Peanut. ANX, they're gonna turn it around, and there's Gorilla. He goes down. They get one kill for now. Everyone else is alive. And Albus Nox, they're backing away. They're just gonna wait for these super minions. They know if the super minions are in the base, they can actually start up some of these objectives like the Elder Dragon, like the Baron, and Rox Tigers will have to worry about the Nexus turret. They're actually TPing in right now to oh. try and rush this Baron down, but that is super, super risky because look who's coming. Yeah, and there's no Mountain Drake here. Caitlyn does deal a lot of damage, but they can't. Oh no. Smurf gets stunned into the wall. He's got the DA, but Rox, they need to fight before Smurf getting it out. He flashes out to safety. Steos getting destroyed by Prey. Oh. And he gets a kill. 4v4 now. Prey might be able to keep it going. Smurf puts up the W as Kira gonna chunk back down. This Caitlyn holds him on the back right now. Oh, I think what they were thinking was that Annex would go for Elder Dragon. And so they made the call to try to go for Baron, thinking, okay, they'll get Dragon, then they're going to recall, we're going to get Baron. But Annex decided not to go for Elder Dragon. They decided not to try to risk it, and now Rox Tigers is going to be the one. Tons of super minions already in the bottom lane, in the base of the Rox Tigers. They're trying to get one of these big objectives. I've caught them. They're actually going for the Baron. Annex will do this quite quickly. 
I think Smurf maybe caught one. He's looked to Peanut here. He's going to keep his verdict him out of the way. Peanut does dodge that one, but the stun's going to keep him against the wall. He's coming. Peanut's looking for it. Smurf going to try and keep him out. Peanut wants it. Throws the needle. Goes it. back in. Peanut looking for the steal. He does it one more time. Steros is dead. There is no smite from Alpha's Nux. They, they got a tower. They got a tower. Oh, this game is so crazy. I can't believe it. And they got Elder Drake. Rock oh, Tigers man. with Elder Dragon and Baron. They might be looking to make their last stand up mid lane. This might be their doom push. And the Zizorot portal is in mid lane too. So it's not like there's going to be added pressure going into top or bottom. Albus think they can just knock Peanut away, but he dodges around it. And now there's no smite. You just got to stop here. You just got to stop hitting the Baron and just get out. Otherwise, the jungler with smite will steal it from you. And you gain nothing. Oh, and there's Peanut with a huge sigh of relief. They let him live as well. He's GA popped in the pit, but they had to back out because Rox couldn't make their way in. And Ooh. now with Elder Dragon, they're just going for it. Yeah, but they Prey is going to heal up. Wow, look at that life steal. This is the best chance to win for the Rox Tigers with Elder Drake and Baron just pushing straight down. Sadly for them, there's no flash for Gorilla to go super aggressive. But if they can start a team fight, they're definitely going to go for it. Well, huge wave building up top side oh, by no. NX as well. This side lane's looking a little open, but Rox just might shove it down before it matters. Smurf looks for Prey! Almost carries him into the wall, and Licorit going to miss his stun. All Albus wants to do here is keep Rox Tigers around, but don't lose any members. Massive minion waves in the side lanes pushing into the base, forcing the Rox Tigers to go back. They're not able to do anything. Elder Drake is going to disappear. Baron will disappear soon, and they just have to try and defend. And here's the chase. And this is such a crazy moment in terms of communication. There's so many things is happening, and so many people are calling different things. This is so tense right now, and the, the minion wave in bottom will be killed, and it looks like ANX, huge minion wave in top lane. They're looking to get that inhibitor and just keep the pressure on the Tigers. Prey will melt this, though, but he can't stand too far forward. Rocks do manage to take the wave out, and ANX lose a window, potentially, to try and force another team fight. That top inhib should stay standing here. Although they are going to go for it, Rox, do they give it up? I think they have to, the inhibitor's gone down. Rox defend with almost nothing left. They landed another great spear from Seho straight, straight onto Prey, so he had to go back to the fountain. It really is all about Prey in these late game fights. Six item, Caitlyn. Another cool thing is how good she is against targets with Hourglass and GA, because if you use it, she puts a trap under you, and when you get back, she just kills you again. So it's really hard to stay alive against the Caitlyn, and it's why we're looking at Prey in these fights here. But him getting hit by a spear, forced him back in base. And that means every single inhib is gone. Two inhibitors, though, about to come back up. There is also a Zizorot in top lane, but I don't like the positioning of that, as it looks like it's probably just going to be taken pretty quickly. And now it's on the Tigers again. Fun One fact, more time. That was Prey's drop portal. He bought it and then re bought another item. So still the six items he had, but the gold is almost even, which is crazy to think when we're at this game now 40 minutes ago. ANX though playing up with pressure rocks despite the Baron. The Elder Dragon buff has dropped off and they just kind of have to let the pressure come from them for a little while longer because there are just too many super minions and minions if they leave will win the game. They're that strong at this stage of the game. Every single summoner is available. It's all about having one guy from rocks back to defend the Nexus turret and then suddenly you just get a bit of damage on the inhib. If you just take all three inhibitors down, you might be able to win the game without even team fighting against the six item Caitlyn. Because ANX has shown for the last 30 minutes they've struggled to coordinate engages. And now they're just playing around these big objectives. Theos looks like he wants to get that bottom inhibitor in. I think he's. Oh no. Oh, Gorilla looks for it, finds a flash, gets a pole one or two. Liquid here to save them though. Has to burn the ultimate. Kira back in there. Gets Prey in the Hemo playing against Smurf. Gonna try and kick them out. He gets one. Oh my god, the Indian goes down. Peter trying to cut out Miracle, but Prey's dead. That might be enough. Kira is gonna fall down as well. 4v4 and Prey went down. And you got the super minions here already. You're kidding me. Gorilla trying to defend again, but Smurf keeps Kira out of the fight. And ANX, they just need a little more. But that's not enough. Chaos drops out again. Gorilla with a huge play. Finds him with the pulverize. And now Miracle cutting it out. But he's actually going to get out of the way here. Yeah, so much there is the Moors going to pop and Miracle still fighting in. Needs to Save Danny Carey! Going to try and get down. Like Run! Save the Smurf! Gets him with the flash. He's alive! Gorilla gets the eye by Smurf. Oh, 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 Miracle! Are you oh. kidding me? That's exactly what
what they gave them. And they had X. They might have enough for your smoke court again. And you've got to be kidding me. We still got minions pushing in. There's one Nexus turret on about 20% HP. Lucian is still alive, but so is Kuro here on the Syndra. Trying to get oh, the GA. Earth lived. Barely. But A and X get one stun. The GA goes down. Oh. And Smurf gonna come back in. He's gonna flush out. Smurf gonna try and get up, but Smurf gonna get stunned up, and that's another kill. And somehow, this game is not over still. Against all odds, the Tigers held on without prey, and huge credit to Miracle. That was insane kiting and insane peeling. Huge credit to both teams right now. Ooh. Prey is up now. He's clearing the minion wave in bottom. We will see another Baron and another Elder Dragon. Do they even matter at this point? Like, one team that's going to decide this game. I mean, Elder Dragon probably matters, but Baron just might not be worth it now. No, basically, for Albus Nox Luna, they just want the Baron to buff the minions because with so many super minions pushing in, buffed up by Baron, that is more value than players almost because it's so hard to defend against them from so many different angles. But there's always that risk of Peanuts stealing Baron. Peanuts Guardian Angel's back for the next team fight. So Smeb and Peanut both have Guardian Angel and Annex, no GA available to their team right now. That is so big for the team fight because the resurrection is so big right now. All right, we're back, guys. We actually, this is, a, this is just a second or third game running again <laughs> and again and again, where once again, we're gonna play around Baron. They're trying to set up a trap in the jungle. Two blue trinkets on the side of rocks. Tigers, however, which will be able to spot what's happening in there. But if you consider the fact that if, if Albus just starts the Baron, they force at least four members of rocks to come down and try and stop them. And I'm not sure if Smep on his own can stop so many waves of super minions. So the goal is actually not even to... Well, now they can't rush it because there's so many members stuck in the base. Now you just rush it down. Peanut is not even close. Take down this Baron. Get your first Baron of the game <laughs> and buff these minions. Yep, two-man Baron. It's going to go over to ANX. So that will be nice stats because right now when everyone's at six items, it's Ooh. really difficult to get stats. Uh, and the Baron stats are going to be really, really big, but no Elder Dragon coming up. However, huge waves in every, every single lane. Tons of super minions. And exactly what Deficio said. Those super minions getting buffed by this Baron might just be enough on their own. Elder Dragon, 10 minute timer. We're probably not seeing it again, although I've seen crazier things in this game. Another inhibitor retake here, potentially. Rocks have a little more to defend, but mid's kind of coming back up soon. Bot is in a similar vein. It's actually almost back up as Curious just pushing minions down. And can Rocks defend this? This is almost impossible. Oh no. Donia's burnt, ulti in from Liquid, he has to move it in, he does get out of the way, and Smurf gonna move Gorilla out, the ulti's burnt! Oh, he didn't actually want to knock Gorilla away, the ulti was already forced, that could maybe have at least killed him, there was no flash on Gorilla for just a few more seconds, he does have flash now, he can come back out and be a Miracle, no! Oh, Peanut doesn't find it, Smurf finds Peanut actually, but Gorilla Ray still doing damage as Gorilla makes his way back in. Smurf gonna tie one up, but Smurf is gigantic in the front of the fight. Smurf gonna stun him against the rubble, but that's not enough either. But Dominion! Oh my god, the Nexus is open. They get ZZ Rod minions trying to stop these minions from hitting the actual Nexus. They're killing all the ZZ Rod Voidlings first, and now everyone is fighting as Do well! They go for it, I think they have to! Fight goes in, but Kuros dives on a miracle! Still tipping alive again! Nexus over Kira! Trying to take down Bray, but the Nexus just a little too much for Lizard! Going for it! The hero of ANX! And it's not enough just yet! Nexus Rock's still back alive. again! All these minions are hitting the void link still. The next is go. He's the greatest time. He's gonna get he it. They did it. Oh my god, they did it. ANX just took down the Rocks Tigers. Let oh. that link in. <laughs> Albus Knox Luna just took down the Rocks Tigers and I'm challenging them for the number one spot in Group A. That was one of the best late game rotations at the very end. And they, they did it. They out macroed the Rocks Tigers in a late game. And you can't take this away from them. This was a, a 67, almost a 70 minute game.